so um, I thought in David Kramer style, I would kind of recap, recap uh, where we are um, with uh, where we've come from signing the signing the lease in August um, 2011, I think it was. Um, so since uh, when HR took over, we were um, we had 13 vacant storefronts. Um, we had multiple tenants who didn't have leases. We had multiple tenants who were super behind on paying rent and who or weren't paying rent at all. Um, since then, we've signed nine new leases. Um, that's not including the child school lease, which unfortunately um, is no longer a lease anymore. Um, but since then, we've signed a bunch of really great tenants, which include Wholesome Factory, um, which is the small organic market. Um, we've signed uh, New York Public Library for the first floor of 504, where they're going to be doing a state of the art um, tech library there. Uh, we've also signed up Subway Sandwiches. The new wine and liquor store has opened recently, which I hear people are really happy about. Um, we're really happy that they've finally opened. Um, we have Coach Scott's Main Street Suites, the ice cream store on the island, um, and uh, we have a new urgent care, which we announced last time, um, which we hope uh, will start renovations soon. Um, and then we just signed a lease this week with uh, a daycare center for um, 568 Main Street. Um, so we have a lot of we had a lot of um, progress, I think, over the, our time Ariana, here. Excuse me, I got the seven. Oh, I'm not done. Okay. So we've also um, we've also signed uh, a lease with Trellis. So when we took over, Trellis's lease was coming due. Their store was not looking so great anymore. Um, as part of their new lease, they're doing renovations, um, and so we signed a lease with them. We've also signed a lease with Gallery Riva, and um, actually worked with them to create. Um, a partnership where Cornell now has space in there too, which I think has been really successful for both parties involved, um, and I was quite pleased with that. Um, so, you know, we're talking to others. There are other um, old tenants who would like to stay here who need to do renovations to their stores, and we're working with them to figure out what's best for them and their future on the island. Um, we're also talking to a lot of new retailers. Um, there's been significant amounts of interest in the island since there's been a lot of articles, I'm sure you all have seen them published in particular about Cornell coming. Um, and with our new buildings going up, people see that there's a lot of activity here and they're excited about it. Um, our renovation, I think, also really helped. Um, and um, I think people ha have really started to uh, to see the island and to see what's going on, which is great. Retailers seem to be doing quite well, I think. Uh, Islanders are starting to frequent the shops here a lot more, which is really um, a good thing because without the people in the community to support um, the stores, they don't survive without you either, right? So um, I think that's really important. Um, today we have we still have six vegan spaces, but as I said, we um, we have a lot of uh, we're working on a lot of uh, deals right now and talking to a lot of people. Um, some I think. The community, I think, will be quite happy with a lot of the, with a lot of those. Um, should, should they go through? Yeah, we're talking to a couple of food food uses that we think the island has been like looking in for. Like you mean, or like in purchasing food? Like a like, like rush like in a restaurant type. Um, <coughs> uh, we are talking to um, some other. Uh, non for profit types who are looking to um, remain within the community um, and um, have space and pay rent and you know set up an establishment. So um, we're talking to them as well. Um, we weren't leaving anyone for an hour. Not as of the moment. It's one of the things we really want. So um, we finally won an eviction. Um, after a very long period of time for the hardware store space. Um, we're actually, um, Pajon is working with Riva to um, put up an art installation in the windows of the space at 544. Um, and uh, so we're working on that. We haven't had interest yet from a hardware store. We've reached out to many different hardware stores. I think it'll come, it just hasn't come yet. Um, so, you know, 
I think that's that's where we are. We've done you know a lot of other successful things, including our renovation and Gristiti doing their major renovation, which I thought looked really fabulous when they did it, and was really happy that they did that. Um, and you know we we've been we've been trying to get more more uses to the island that people really need. What do you think the biggest holdup is? The Mark, biggest holdup? Yeah. Oh, so what do you think the biggest holdup is? Well, Thank you. I don't know. When I started to think about this, and I, I like went back and I looked at all our leases and where we are and where we've come. We actually have signed a lot of leases in, a sh in, in a period of time. And the reality is that um, when we were when we took these spaces over, a lot of these spaces were never inhabited. They're not submetered. They don't have utilities. They're not up to code. And when a new retailer comes in they're expecting a bunch of things and so we're working with them either they're installing it or we're installing it it's part of our lease negotiation but we're working with them to get the utilities that these people need into their stores so you know it's not the same as um, <coughs> newer buildings that are built a certain way and they're just total vanilla box spaces so I think maybe that that's been um, I don't want to say challenging, but I think it's like each space is very different, and each, let's not forget that we're in five different buildings, including Motorgate, and they're all very different. Their submeter is different, their owners are different, um, uh, their utilities are different, and so the, all the spaces just work very differently. Um, I think other than that, um, I think the island was, was a little bit un, off the beaten path. And so getting people to come here and see um, how, many, how much foot traffic there is and how many people there are it takes a little while to have that buy-in. Um, I think that we've been extremely successful in marketing um, since doing the renovation, which I think really helped. And that was part of what, what we did in our um, deal with Rioc to, to move, move that. So I think we're, I kind of see us in maybe the second phase of, the, of our uh, of our retail renovation and our re making what we want to happen on the island. The first phase was signing all those new deals and then getting through the renovation, and now we're really starting to um, populate the stores with other retailers that the community's been looking for. Do you think the rent, the, the price of the uh, cost of the, the rent or charging has anything to do with it? Because I remember David said last time that rent wasn't an issue that anybody who was, who was looking was not had no problem with the rent, it was the other issues. Is that still the case? Yeah, it's not, it's not the, rent isn't the biggest factor. I think getting someone to come, come to the island sometimes. Um, we, you know, we're not charging rent just across the river. Um, we're not even charging Long Island City rent. So um, I think that, I don't think that it's rent. I think it's, um, you know, we're, we're, we also, we don't want to just sign a lease with somebody who um, isn't vetted, sure. right? And, and so who isn't vetted, 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 right? vetted, we want to make sure that the people that we're investing in our time and our money and um, everything that we're doing are people that are going to have, you know, are going to have a great business and be a part of the community and, um, are going to do well here. We hope that the people that we're putting in place are going to do well, but it takes time to have those conversations. And I know Pat John spends a lot of time working on that, so um, I think that that's you know I don't I don't think it's the best. A couple more, but if anybody else wants to jump in, mm -hmm. I was just thinking about the hardware store. I was thinking perhaps if we uh, approach if we approach maybe a large companies such as Home Depot, which is across the river, and maybe they can tr have a little tiny, uh, I mean, to approach them as if satellite. maybe a little s satellite, small Home Depot mm -hmm. attached maybe to the one on 59th Street, maybe, if we get someone who's close to us, and basically what they could bring are the smaller smaller items that we are purchasing. Yeah. I, think, I think maybe a larger hardware store might be interested. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, sell it a certain way and small items, nails, or things that we 
Like the things that we would need. We've reached, we've reached out to many hardware stores, larger chains. Um, you know, we can suggest this option, another option. I think we've talked with our um, broker about that um, as well and, and unsuccessfully so far. But you never know, right? There's certain items that will sell. I think that's what they have to keep in mind is when you approach them to think about certain things that you know that the islanders will buy. Yeah. Toilet paper, paper towels. We will yeah. definitely buy those things, you know. Yeah. Although they take a lot of space. Yeah. Right, they take space. For the other ones that are vacant, you mentioned that you guys were working with the art gallery on doing something to kind of spruce mm -hmm. them up. Can you do that with all six of them? And either either spruce them up that way, or it, it just looks so awful. I mean, you can look and see, it just looks terrible. It's not, they're not being kept nice. So it's one thing to not be able to be rent them, to, to rent them, but to have them looking where you can see all, um, like the old hardware store. You mm -hmm. can see the broken shelves and all that kind of stuff looks, looks really mm -hmm. awful. If we could cover that up some way, not just the brown paper, but something that looks nice, mm -hmm. or get some of those temporary installations in that, that know that they're temporary because they do it all over the city. Like I think I had sent you some stuff mm -hmm. on that where they go in, they use it yeah, for performance space or whatever. Yeah, I've spoken to Noah Longer MJ before about space here and also another space that we have on another property. Um, you know, the, the thing that we have been struggling with um, is that, um, well, first of all, I the the new day, the new um, urgent care space, that space is leased to somebody, right? So he has brown paper up. I can't go into his space and put something in, right? It's like he has, he owns that space right now. Um, but don't worry, even when he owns it, aren't there uh, parameters as to what they can do with the windows and everything? I mean, yeah, the deli owns the deli, but we have that thing. Right. That picture in there, can't we do something like that? I mean, not necessarily that picture, but something. Right, no, I mean, I think with the other spaces, we're going to start with 544 and see how it goes. We have a bunch of deals percolating, and we, I think that a lot of them will go through successfully. I think over the next couple of months, we'll see where we are, and if we still, if we still feel that way, we'll probably move on and add um, new other locations to it. The thing is, it's our street. I hate to walk down the street and see crappy stuff. Yes. That's what my reaction is when I walk by the hardware store. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, stuff like that. <coughs> um, if you can't rent them fast for all the reasons you said, at least keep their keep their windows spruced up so that the passerby doesn't get depressed just from walking down the street. <laughs> and I mean, even if they have the space, there there are rules as to what the store has to look like. Anybody who's leasing right. it has but having, brown paper. Well, for having brown paper during renovations is pretty standard. Really? <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen brown paper <laughs> in Manhattan in any place that was renovated. Yeah, I mean, we've had that all the time. Part of How long do they think this renovation can take? Well, part of the issue, which I was kind of trying to explain before, is that the that space didn't have proper utilities going to it. So we have to call proper utilities to it, which include water and includes um, electric with a meter. And um, it's very complicated. And we, you know, you have to have an engineer or come and That sounds like brown paper for a very long time. No, we're, we're pretty far down the process. Um, and we should be starting work within the next few weeks, I think. And um, the tenant has a design ready. Um, we've approved the design, and they're hiring their contractors now, so I don't, you know, we can talk, we can talk to the owner about what, if he can put up something in the windows. Would we like him to talk to us, too, because I think he, I think what his first step into the community wants to be a positive one, and I don't think you want to go for sure, several well, months with brown paper if the community feels... It looks bad. I mean, I think he would want, I mean, we'll help him. We're, we're very happy to help in any way, either with the gallery or somebody, to make that make it look nicer. Sure, we'll, um, we'll talk to him and see, you know, give him your contact info if he wants yeah, to. Yes, I'd like to talk to him. Yeah. And what were you saying about the no longer empty stuff and, and that, that uh, Durst Foundation 
performance stuff where they give performance space mm -hmm. that didn't. Yeah, though no longer empty. Um, it didn't. We decided not to move forward just because we had so so many things going on. Um, I think we'll probably we may revisit it again if we if we find that we need to scale back going through. It's it's just we did it for once. I recognize it's hard, and I recognize all the reasons, but given that here's where we are, and we've still got six empty, that's like 50%, and it's still empty. Uh, and can we get it like next month? Can we say if we're not? I can't say that. Can we get <laughs> David to commit that to us to, to do something with that space within a month if it's not um, enough? Time? I recognize that. I will talk to David, but I don't think we can recommend to that right now. Maybe for the rest of us, I'll talk to him. <laughs> well, the, the, the reason here... I, I don't want to put you on the spot like that, because I know... No, it's, it's just no. We, we hear it every single day, and we've been hearing it for a lot of years now, and I get that this problem is renting, but when there are organizations out there who will come in and occupy the space yeah. knowing full well they have to leave at the drop of a hat, I, I don't understand the problem with doing that. Marjorie, we had a um, meeting with um, David uh, for the Rose Bird and a number of other uh, things, and, and we will, I will bring this up. Okay. I don't know what the bar would look like. Kathy uh, wants to know about a baker. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the, what we're, we're bringing from the community mm -hmm. is the notion that, yes, having a full, successful retail operation requires a lot of building, mm -hmm. it requires a lot of restructuring. and we're learning to be patient with that, or more patient. I mean, build-outs seem to take a very long time, and there are complicated reasons for, for each and every one, I'm sure. But the notion that while space is lying, is, is fallow, mm -hmm. space is fallow right now, perhaps they're with an eye to when and what the timing might be, some utility might be found. Mm -hmm. There's, it, it increases foot traffic. It makes the space more attractive. It, it brings, you know, it, you know. Imagine you're showing space A, and space B is is, is dark brown paper. <coughs> now imagine space B is some sort of performance going on, and it's lit, and there's there's traffic going right. by. It's, yeah, it's, no, it's, I, it's, I it's totally nothing, nothing more complicated mm -hmm. than that. So, you know, we're kind of a focal point for some concerns here. Yeah, no, I, I understand. And I just wanted to say the last point, but I can't promise that. Um, the card store. Mm -hmm. Last time I heard the card store was going to be leading, and it was because of the, the rent is being doubled. Um, the card store, we're talking to the card store about um, if they want to move to a smaller space, or if they want to stay in that space, what they would need to do to renovate the space. Um, I'm sure many people here would agree that the way that the space looks right now isn't particularly acceptable. Um, so we're, we've been talking with Prakash in particular um, about what's going to happen. I can't, I don't know if they're going to stay or they're not going to stay, um, but we're talking to them. Okay, so it wasn't just a clear cut, hey, we're doubling the rent, so you have to leave. You know, we gave them, we've given them many other options. There's a lot of other spaces. They have um, one of our larger spaces. There are other smaller vacant spaces like 615 or um, Dr. Flanagan's old space at 507, which they could also move to, which would actually probably be suited better to in East End, which mm -hmm. um, now is tending to be on the smaller side because of all the digital media that's out there. Um, but we haven't really been able to reach an agreement yet. Hey, uh, I just want to mention for our uh, attendees, this meeting is recorded. The recording will be available, so there's no you'll be able to review it, first off. And second off, some of the negotiations shade into areas that are confidential, where money is being talked about and terms are being talked about, and so we will need to shy away from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted that blatant statement of, Throwing them out, double the rent and throwing them out to be well. It's 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 it's, it's out in the community. Right, that's why. So I it up. so that that's where it's yeah, coming from. We often refer to a bit of boilerplate, which goes way back. So, uh, for public discussion, financial matter would materially affect the value of the lease. 
And so those are the areas we shy away from. You don't tell one businessman or a woman what kind of deal, publicly what kind of deal you're making. There's another. Mm -hmm. For those reasons, we have to back off of stuff, which is a shame because the public wants to know and uh, needs to know and feels like they have a right to know. But we can't always help them. Simple as that. And often here, yeah, the yeah, but Mr. Swander, because <coughs> I'm actually the chair of the Main Street uh, and, uh, uh, Retail uh, uh, Advisory Committee. My name is Anne Cunningham, and uh, because this is a combined meeting, my understanding, so therefore I thought that I could maybe also say something. Uh, well, th this, this meeting is open to the public, but we're giving you a chance to say something. Okay, so, so actually it's a little speech, so I'm starting to read it. One piece of paper, two sides. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, so first of all, we hope that uh, we can start a dialogue with Hudson Directed, because so far it has been more like a monologue, you know? So we are people here in Roosevelt Island, and we have voice, and we hope that you mm. would also hear our voice. And... Um, Despite your great work that you have uh, done on the Main Street, the ceilings and the lamps and the, the benches and also in the arcade, now it looks worse than ever. It looks really bad. And that's not only my opinion, it's everybody's opinion who live here. So it's a bad thing. And then, um, well, last time when we had a meeting in October <coughs> with uh, Mr. Madhavi, we had a lot of people who had a, a lot of ideas what to do and how to fill those empty windows and, uh, you know, to make it nicer and even helping to get the ideas how to get the little entrepreneurs here. Uh, but the company never got back to us, so we were a little bit disappointed about that. And we have come to the conclusion, although you just said that it's not the price, but we think that it must be the price, because otherwise, you know, the place is not being filled. Because there's a lot of little operators from Queens who would love to come here, but they are not able to do it because they uh, perceive that it's way too expensive. And then, of course, you know, if you compare the price per square foot to the... Um, uh, food uh, traffic in front of uh, the stores, it is very easy to do the calculation that uh, it is not going to be a viable operation. So the, I think that the prices have to come down, but that's our opinion. And then we probably have uh, financial projections for the Main Street, and it would be great if we could see them. I don't know if we could uh, reveal them. And uh, uh, what else? Yeah, people are basically wondering that uh, how it, could it be possible for your corporation to uh, just keep these spaces empty because they are generating losses. And we have tried to figure out that uh, what is explaining this and we came to the conclusion that it has to be uh, tax uh, write-offs that you are basically using a lot of the space because you can't charge what you want to charge at this point, maybe later, let's say 10 years from now. Uh, the population has changed, the demographics is totally different. Then you can start asking much higher prices. Maybe you want to wait and meanwhile you just write off the losses for your taxes. So we would like, we really would like to understand that how do you see the Main Street? How do you vision the Main Street? So it would be you know, fantastic if you would give an honest answer to us, so we would, and numerical answer besides, so that we would really see the price. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Please. <laughs> I, I, I don't pretend to be a financial wizard, but the, the size of a tax write-off that you could get in a corporation like related, that would that would be a kind of silly um, thing for them to be doing to keep this empty, to hinder the renting of the buildings that they're having because people don't see a live Main Street for the in 
insignificant little snacks, right? Or things we well, possibly get. Good. Good. We do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> but I'm going to invoke one of David's laws, which is that don't look for a conspiracy where simple incompetence will explain it. 